If you discover a small fire, you may feel that you can fight it with one of the portable fire extinguishers. After all, it can't be that difficult, can it? But make the wrong choice and you could make the fire worse or seriously injure yourself. The key to using a fire extinguisher is to make sure that you know which extinguisher to use. You're not putting yourself in danger, you're not putting anyone else in danger, and you understand the limitations of the different fire extinguishers. It's important to remember that all fires, irrespective of their size, are very dangerous and potentially life-threatening. Portable fire extinguishers should only ever be used on a fire which is in its early stages. This is because they have a limited amount of firefighting agent and will run out much quicker than you'd expect. For example, a 2 kilogram carbon dioxide extinguisher has a discharge time of around 12 seconds. If used in the early stages, the portable fire extinguishers are capable of extinguishing the fire before it becomes a large one. To operate an extinguisher, remove the safety pin or clip, test the extinguisher works first, and then aim the nozzle at the base of the fire and squeeze the handles together. A jet of water, foam, powder or CO2 should be applied across the base of the fire. We will now take a closer look at the most common types of fire extinguisher that you are likely to find in our premises and how they may be used. Water, which is suitable for paper, wood, textiles and most plastics. It extinguishes the fire by removing the heat, which cools the fire. The water fire extinguisher is not suitable for fires that involve electrical equipment. Foam spray, which is suitable for paper, wood, textiles and plastics. The extinguisher removes both the heat and oxygen, so it is not only cooling the fire, but smothering it too. Although this extinguisher is designed to be used near to live electrical equipment, you should be aware that this extinguisher is water-based, so there is still a danger of electrocution if it is used directly on live electrical equipment. The CO2 extinguisher is suitable for fires involving electrical equipment. To extinguish the fire, it temporarily removes the oxygen and replaces it with a non-flammable gas. When the CO2 extinguisher is being operated, the discharge horn can become sufficiently cold for your hand to stick and burn. So once the horn has been directed at the fire, you must let go of it. Whilst the CO2 has good penetration, it does not have great cooling qualities, which may result in reignition. Dry powder. Dry powder extinguishers are extremely versatile and are suitable for small fires involving solids, flammable liquids, gases and electrical fires. To extinguish the fire, it temporarily removes the oxygen and replaces it with CO2 as the particles instantly decompose and provides a thin covering of an inert material. You should then direct the jet of powder at the base of the fire in a slow, sweeping motion. You must remember that the powder has no cooling effect on the fire, so you should be prepared for possible reignition. You must also bear in mind that the powder is very fine and its effectiveness can be greatly reduced when operated outside in a windy environment and when in a confined space may create a dense cloud that could obscure your vision and create breathing problems. A fire blanket is designed to either completely surround a burning object or is placed over a burning object and sealed closely to a solid surface around the fire. Whether the blanket is placed on top or surrounding it, the job of the blanket is to cut off the oxygen supply to the fire, thereby putting it out. Before attempting to fight a fire, you should follow these simple rules. Always make sure you have raised the alarm and a call has been made to the fire service. Always make sure you have the correct extinguisher for the type of fire you are about to fight. Using the wrong extinguisher could make the fire worse or result in you becoming a casualty. Always test the extinguisher before attempting to fight the fire. If the fire is in a room, behind a closed door, 
Carefully check the door and then the handle using the back of your hand. If you can feel the heat of the fire through the door or handle, or you can see smoke coming from beneath the door, then do not open the door. If the door does not feel hot and there is no sign of smoke, then open the door slowly, keeping low until you can see the fire. Always keep low. As the fire dies down, you can then move in closer. Always keep an exit directly behind you. Never attempt to fight a fire if it is spreading rapidly. Never fight a fire if you don't know what is burning. Never allow the fire to get between you and your exit. Never continue to fight a fire if there is too much smoke or you are at risk from inhaling smoke. Remember, most people that die in fire are victims of smoke inhalation. If you are not getting control of the fire or it continues to grow, leave at once, making sure that the doors and windows are closed.